technical director all india football federation madam please most respected guest speaker isaac doro from romania who is the aiff technical director we other esteemed distinguished guests alexandria dr kluka i'm sorry i'm able to get the other name and all the other uh, distinguished guests and my dear friends it's an honor for the ministry of youth affairs and khelo india to have isaac doro who has a doctorate phd from romania for having consented to be a guest speaker for the uh, pe program and community coaching dr uh, isaac doro had his doctor program phd in cognitive football analysis in 2002 from university of chukyo nagayo he was a sporting director from 2015 to 2018 yokohama uh, marinos japan appointment by the manchester city group technical director and head coach 1997 to 2002 nagayo grampus a japan awarded second prize for the thesis on new method of analysis the vertical and horizontal com compactness in soccer games fifa award congress in asia kuala lumpur fifa congress of football the movement of ice in the professional environment of sports and and science master degree university of uh, cryovo Romania in 1985 the importance of soccer development in the modern society uh, modern university of nancy france 1992 scientific basis mechanical principles and techniques of the measures method in sports rehabilitation japan 1997 comparative analysis of technical youth development program romanian federation national coaching school romania 1998 analysis of dominant vertical and horizontal compactness in football second asian fifa congress malaysia 2000 analysis of cognitive aspect in attacking football games uh, support 2001 uh, yokohama uh, f marinos 2018 of the final japan league uh, cup 2017 final emperor cup romania under 18 national team 2014 uh, he uh, of the uh, qualification for under 19 european championship he also was with the uh, umm selal football club 2018 champion emir of qatar cup i think i have a very distinguished personality in the field of soccer football he has brought a lot of names and that's how he is in india guiding the indian team with all its uh, uh, technicalities and indeed it's an honor where he has a passion for physical education and he's got a lot of ideas by which uh it could be the physical education in the country could be improved may i now request our speaker to speak on the topic new leadership style specific for modern methodology of teaching the physical education so please hey, uh thank you very much for this uh, marvelous presentation and uh, let me uh kick uh, off this presentation regarding the leadership the new leadership style that we need to develop uh also it's important that nowadays when we face a lot of challenges we don't grow when the things are easy we grow when we face challenges and now at times we face a lot of challenges in public health due to a pandemic of uh, corona economic challenges social challenges in some countries and i think coming uh, having this presentation today of leadership it's a need as well because nowadays we require leaders that can lead us during all these challenges and um, the main idea that i want to share with you is that true leaders don't create followers they create more leaders and we'll try to depends on our time 
to go through all this uh, information about uh, leadership definition, leadership skills, leadership models, and also the, we make some comparative approach between the boss and the leadership and as well to see the specific leadership and modern leadership in physical education. You know, the physical uh, education teachers and coaching community play a an, uh, an huge important role in the development of the society. Needless to say that nowadays the sports men or leaders, they become the superstars, the superstar of the societies, of the international superstar as well. And of course, in the, nowadays we can find a lot of definition about what is leadership. What is the definition? What's the best one? I think that for uh, the simple definition that we can have it is that leadership is behavior process that influencing individuals and groups towards set and reaching goals. Again, very simple, as a behavioral process of influencing individual and groups. One aspect of the, this definition that we need to take in consideration is that leadership is empowering people, right? And who is a leader? You are a leader if you inspire others to dream more, to learn more and to do more and become more. Again, to do more, to do more and become more. Leadership is not a position, but an action. Leadership is not a static, it's a very dynamic action. That's a lot of work. Leadership, leaders aren't born, they are made. They are made of the society, the, the culture, of the environment, through the hard work. Let's figure out some uh, uh, traits of leadership. Of course, uh, one of the, the, the most important one is the self-confidence and the energy and persistence. But, now I have some experience working in, uh, and I think that the stress tolerance aspect and the willingness to take responsibility is playing a major dimension in the definition of the leadership of the physical education or also coaches communities. More popular, we can say that true leaders will always practice the three R's, respect for self, respect for other, and responsibility for all the action. Who's a leader? What are the skills of, of the leader? We can find nowadays tons of documents about. And in my view as a, man or a coach with his more than 30 years of practical experience and academic um, activities, I can say that the, the skills needed are intelligent, conceptually skilled, creative, fluent speaker, knowledgeable about group, organized, persuasive, and socially skilled. At this one, please feel free to add everything that you consider as a skill of leadership. If we read on the diagonals of this charter, intelligent, knowledgeable, and socially skilled are the, more in, the most important thing for me. Leadership skills, we can categorize in five essential groups. 
regarding communication, motivation, creativity, feedback, and positivity. Coming back to the leadership of physical education and coaching community co uh, people, I think that defining a physical education teacher as a leader, we need to have some skills. One is, and also is an, uh, a recommendation to, to them, is one is be strong but not really be kind but not weak be bold but not bold be thoughtful but not lazy be humble but not timid be proud but not arrogant of course in um, in india i would emphasize that uh, the coaches the teachers to have a look at the skills needed especially in the last one when we say be proud, but not arrogant, because it's happening that sometimes after uh, very superficial results, everyone is getting uh, arrogant. Skills as a, as a leader, it's important to have that comparative approach between a boss and a leader. 10 years ago, many people have been uh, calling me the boss. And I didn't uh, <laughs> agree, but that was the, you know, the, was just the name. And what's the leader and what's the boss? What's the make the, the difference? As you can see, the boss is saying, go. The leader is saying, let's go. The bosses, focus is what is right now. The leader is what is focused in what is right. Bosses is looking at the short term, leader as a long term. Bosses take credits of the success, of the good job. Leaders gives credit. It's not because of me, it's because of you, or because all of you because you are a person and the power of the group. Classical model of leadership that we can find in, uh, uh, in our society. And then we'll see the model of leadership specific to the sport, to the physical education. I don't want to go through that, uh, all the models, but we got in our nine, 10, 11 models. And one uh, is. Isaac, just, just, uh, just so, sorry to uh, disturb. Uh, actually, I think your mic is. Uh, can you fix your mic? That voice is uh, breaking in between. Hello. I think it's the connection, but... Yeah, now, now, okay, now better. Yeah, it's better? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Sorry for that, yes? yes. And, uh, okay, we got the classic model of leadership. Uh, we go very, very uh, fast in that. Uh, transformational one is they inspire the staff by creating of intellectual uh, stimulation. Uh, servant, transactional, autocratic leadership, laissez-faire leadership, democratic leadership, bureaucratic leadership, charismatic leadership, and situational leadership. Of course, we can... ...development of a school of sorts regarding the leadership. And in my view, we got an 11 models and specific to the
Hello. Yeah, uh, Isaac, your voice your voice is not clear actually. It's it's breaking in between. Uh, what I can do is uh, because the mic is working, maybe the uh, the connection. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Huh? You can continue, please. Yeah, sorry for that. No, no, it's uh, I will try to yes. Yes, and. Uh, regarding to the model of leadership in sports industry and physical education industry, we can say that, you know, the leadership based on training instruction and social support, support and positive feedback, he has the, the, the highest score and the most efficient one. And what kind of leader do you want to be? Uh, personally, I think that it depends on your social environment and your personal uh, qualities. And if we can, if you allow me to share with you, you know, this picture, please, now we have 20 seconds to, to look at this picture and to see what exactly at your serve. 20 seconds. Okay, I'm sure that you, ha you have uh, observed something. It will be excellent if you can drop it in uh, the chat uh, room there. But what we can uh, observe at the first sight. But also, Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, I think it's not because of network, it's because of the mic, I think. Uh, so, yeah, okay. And now it's yeah, working. Yeah. yeah, now it's okay. Okay. And uh, coming back you know, with the leadership, the model, it depends on the angle that you want to see. It depends. that you want to share your knowledge, to share your experience with the group, to make it, depends on the angle that you want to progress the people around you. Roy. And you can see now in that picture, see here, we have two. The girl. Now coming back to discover or to identify the specific leadership model to the physical education. First of all, let's identify the environment that a physical coach, a physical education teacher or a coach, community coach is working. You have first one part is the board of the school or the university that you are working. Then you have your students, you play, you are playing. And you have the parents. Uh, Isaac? Yeah. Yes, hello. Yeah, yeah, now, now your voice is uh, clear. Actually, it's breaking in between, uh, maybe because of mic or disturbance or something. Yes. Okay, well, I will try. I'll try like that. Maybe I'll change. Hello? Yeah, yeah, now yes. it's clear. Okay. And... Um, Thank you. I, I would like to share with you the fact that the best leadership, the 
this model of leadership in sport is based on the emotional intelligence. What it's all about, it, emotional intelligence. I'm sure that you have listened about it, you have dealing ways, you try to uh, do a lot of research and to understand. Emotional intelligence is based on emotional control and controlling by faces and it's same as the fire because once the fire is ignited, then could be a huge problem for a physical education teacher or a coach. What is the emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence is your ability to recognize and understand emotion in yourself and other. And it's your ability to use this awareness to manage your behavior and relationship. Otherwise, is we can say that emotional intelligence is you, yourself, and the others. We can have three main factors, you, yourself, and the others. Of course, this dialectic, you need to open the door of dialectics of awareness, this relationship between you and yourself to discover who you are and how you can manage to uh, share with the other all this energy. Emotional intelligence has five main factors. Motivation, self-awareness, self-regulation, empathy, and social skills. We cannot deal, we cannot assess emotional intelligence. We cannot be successful as a teacher, as a, even as a businessman, as a human being, if we don't have those five elements inside of the structure of emotional intelligence. We'll try a little bit to go in details with every each uh, one. Let's say, firstly, is the motivation. What is all those factors that say here, starting with the motivation, they are in a perfect synergy. They are related, they influence each other. And the development and the progression of them is not progressive, it's in the waves. Let's try to identify some uh, characteristics about motivation. And of course, I'm sure that you know a lot about it, but from my perspective, motivation, the first step as a physical coach is first, you need to motivate yourself. And after, you will motivate the others. Same as we have been talking that it's emotional intelligence, it's you, yourself, and the others. Motivation, what is motivation? Very simple. Then. We cannot talk about motivation without taking into consideration the a hierarchy of needs of Maslow. And based on that, let me remind you that uh, definition of motivation is willingness to do something. And we cannot talk about motivation without taking in consideration the hierarchy of needs, Maslow. Maslow needs have two groups of needs. D needs that we call deficiency needs and G needs gross needs based on uh, Maslow uh, pyramid. What is the deficiency needs? Are those needs that stem from a lack of something, a lack of foods, 
a lack of love or lack or esteem or of a lack of sleep. Then the grow needs are more about growing as a person when other needs are met. You can see more in, the, in, the, in details deficiency needs and growth needs, especially for deficiency needs. We'll have five groups now that we'll try to discover together, to we'll identify this. The D are physiological needs, you know, the, the needs to have breathing, food, water, sleep, uh, relaxing as well the needs of safety, we can see security of body, social security, security of employment, morality, family, needs of love and friendship, family, intimacy, needs of esteem and self-esteem, confidence, achievement, respect of other, respect by other, that we call the deficiency needs, and G needs, growth needs, are related to the self-actualization based on morality, creativity, problem solving, and acceptance of the facts. Physiological needs are the basic require, requirements for survival. Yes, we have been talking about it, but just share with you to, to, uh, to have more in detail. Safety and security is, you know, people need a safe and stable environment. They have a desire to live in a home free from violence or live in a neighborhood where it's safe to work outside. We can see now what's happened in the United States since a lot of, uh, you know, social events because the needs of safety and security is in doubt and the people are asking themselves, they need it. Of course, the, the needs of love and belongings is we need a companionship and acceptance from other in, our, in your life, in our life. Self Esteem. Self-esteem is going beyond other acceptance of you, of who you are. It's more about accepting who you are. And the G needs that is based on self-actualization regarding the humanity, creativity, morality, when every individual needs to create a sense of morality, a sense of independent thinking that we call autonomy in, in terms of developing and growing the humanity or the self-fulfillment. That is coming back to the motivation. Maybe you can ask why we need to talk about this in a physical education teacher because motivating yourself depends on the needs that you require in your life as an individual and you need first of all to have that kind of assessment of your needs to grow and don't let your needs influence your daily activity our uh, example, one day, one of the coach is losing motivation, is not feeling well. But when you go in, in front of your students, you should not show that inner needs that you got it on that day. You need to have a professional consciousness. Yes. Now, I would really like to uh, share with you and really ask you if you go in a chat room I was sending you a link 
when you can self-assess your elements of emotional intelligence. First example for motivation, you will find there, you know, we have, we have 10 criteria, yes? And I would really love you to have a look at this one and to uh, assess to self-evaluation. Then we go for the self-awareness. We finish with the motivation. We go to the second element of emotional intelligence, self-awareness. What does mean self-awareness? Self-awareness is mean, you know, manage the feelings. When we say the manage feelings, it means you need to identify the feelings. And that it calls, you know, emotional awareness. And self-awareness, the first step is a step-by-step -step process. And the first step is ask what instead of why. That, again, ask what instead of why. You don't need to ask every time why is going wrong. Why is not good? Better to ask yourself what I need to do to have positive results. What I need to do to make my students progress. Then second step is spend time with yourself, practice mindfulness, calm. I think in India, you, you have this social practice of yoga, meditation, that it's a huge advantage for you. And the last step, but very important one to identify the self uh, awareness is become a better listener. Try to listen to the people. That is, it's, a, it's a perfect communication. It's not only the way that you talk, it's a, the way and the power of listen to the students, of listen to the people around you. Referees, coaches, federations, teachers, everyone, parents as well. Self-awareness, as we talk about, is controlling your emotions. For that, you need to know your professional identity. What's your weak point and strong point as a professional, as a physical education coach, you are strong more in uh, biomechanics or maybe in the physiology or maybe in a, a skill uh, practicing. But you need to identify your strong points and weak points. And it's controlling of oneself by oneself. Control yourself by yourself. Emotional control in the physio uh, psychology, we have four groups of uh, emotions that we are dealing with four of them during our activity as a physical coach or a physical education or a football coach or a volleyball coach. And I'm sure all of you, you uh, sometimes you have been through these emotions and also you try to control the emotions of your students, of your players. And the red group that we call is the, the most dangerous one that can switch in a negative emotion that we call uh, anger. It's second, stress, frustration, green emotions, like happy, focused, ready to learn. And the blue one is sad, sick, tired, or bored. As a physical coach, or as a coach, or as a community coach, or a professional coach, you need to identify those emotions that are inside you and then control it. Then during the games, during the competitions, during the stress of activities, the players are getting tired. You know, the 
physiological aspect of tiredness in the moment that we are doing a lot of activities, physical activities, the level of ammoniac is increasing and going to the brain. And that is making our cognitive process, the making decision process very slow. And we cannot control those kind of cognitive aspects and also the emotion. And that in that moment, we need the coach, the physical coach to come in to help the player to cool down. For that reason, every time I think in a coaching methodology, uh, after every hard session, we'll have also uh, from six, 12 minutes depends, uh, cool down sessions. Also we have for self-awareness, uh, there is a questionnaire in the, it would be excellent if you can go and the chat room and assess yourself. Yeah, or uh, the third element that it's very important in defining emotional intelligence is empathy. A lot of people, I think, they don't make the difference between empathy and sympathy. I don't want to go in details with all this uh, psychological or cognitive aspects, but empathy is understand or feel what another person is experiencing. Place oneself in another position. It means as a, as a coach, as a physical education, uh, imagine that one of your students is not happy because he didn't play. You need to show a lot of empathy. Or one of your students have you know, a very bad performance, a physical performance in that day, or during a game or during an exam. And if you have this power of empathy, definitely you'll help him progressing in the future as an athlete, but also as a human being. Empathy, you, we can manage to have it as a cognitive aspect, emotional one, and compassionate empathy. The most important thing is we need to take action in empathy. It's not only being an observer, you need to be active. You need to be involved. It's not necessary only to feel or to understand. You need to take action. Also, we have a questionnaire in that uh, 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 chat room. It would be excellent if you can go in that. And another element of this emotional intelligence that we need to manage, that we need to have it as a physical education or as a coach or as a professional coach is the social skills. Social skills are the ability to know, to feel and interact with the people around. Again, it's not necessary only to know things. It's not useful to only feel those emotions. You need to interact. That we call social skills. People have a lot of cognitive or, or cognitive informations about their profession, about the physical education, the biomechanics, the uh, psychological, the physiological aspect of the trainings, but interacting with the people is missing. And for that reason, his social skills are not there. Once you don't have a social skill, you, the level of your emotional intelligence is going low. The social skill is based on four dimension, First of one, I consider the most important is the 
professionalism. You need to have this professional consciousness. You need to have the details about your job. You need to reach a high academic standard and also to have this uh, integrity of learning every day and learning, especially in sports, we learn a lot from mistakes. In that way, we're increasing our professionalism or professional standard. Second step is collaboration, communication, and social responsibility. I will, uh, uh, with your permission, I would like to spend a little bit more time with this social responsibility. In the sports nowadays, in general, and football in particular, have a huge social responsibility. Needless to say that the sports play a huge role in the social and public health. For that reason, the physical education in schools and universities, in every educational organization should play a very important role. I know in India, now I'm, I'm here for almost one year, unfortunately, physical education activities, classes, are not seen in a proper way. They are not uh, valued as should be. Many high schools or junior high schools, they don't do the physical education classes or they give up easily. Okay, we do nothing today, then let's go and study mathematics. I know that in India, the parents, the family playing also a tremendous role in the development of sports social responsibility. But unfortunately, again, many teachers and under pressure of the parents, they are giving easy and the physical education activities, training. Of course, uh, our uh, dignitaries and in the beginning of this um, inauguration, we got the Minister of Youth and Sports that he emphasized the needs of sports culture in India. And this is how we need to implement the sports culture. This is starting not by up to down from the minister to us, need to start from us to them, from down to up. And of course, we need all the classes, the physical education in the schools, in my view, need to be compulsory. Again, compulsory as mathematics, as biology, as physics, as chemistry. Need to be compulsory in every each school. Also a social skill. We have a questionnaire there. I'll be again, and please take your time, fill in there go on the link that is in the, in the chat and try to fill in. Right. The most important aspect of emotional intelligence for a physical coach, for a coach, for an athlete, as well as a self-regulation. What does it mean? Again, we spoke before the uh, emotional classification. We have four groups of emotions, yes, and the red, yellow, green, and blue. 
First of all, we need to control the behavior, emotion, and the thoughts. That is self-regularization. We need to control our thoughts, our thinking as well. And emotional self-regulation is the ability to manage disruptive emotion and impulses. Sometimes during the games, during the uh, physical activities, we got disruptive emotions or impulses. We should not be ashamed of that. But we need to control them. We need to control, to transform this negative emotion in positive emotion. I know it's not easy. It's easy to say, but are very difficult. But as we um, spoke in the beginning of this uh, webinar, the leadership based on emotional intelligence is not born, is made of a lot of hard work. And it's up to us to identify those emotions and control this emotion and thoughts. Control again, oneself by myself, or myself for myself as well. Also, we have a self-regulation questionnaire. Uh, again, I'll be more than happy if you can fill it in. And you can choose. No need to go to all of this uh, questionnaire. If you feel that you want to assess yourself more on the self-regulation, you can do it there. If you feel that you want to go to check to a self-assessment, self the motivational aspect of your intelligence, emotional intelligence, you can do only that. And you will see the questionnaire that is uh, done. We have three zones, depending on the scoring. The first one is the strength zone. Second, giving attention to where you feel you are weakest will pay dividends. Then you need to pay attention. You now in B, what I need to improve, right? And also the third zone is development priority. Now we uh, classified this questionnaire in three zones that is helping you to identify the needs. If you are in the 10 and 10, 17 points, it means you are in the development priority. You need, it's here, development priority. Example, if the self-awareness, you are very, uh, you are in the zone of strengths and self-regulation. You are in the need attention. Motivation, if you are in a, the zone of development priority, it means it requires to you to spend more time to increase the motivational factors in yourself. Yes, that is giving you the opportunity to develop faster. And based on that uh, questionnaire, you will have it there. And I, I think I don't want to spend more time. Uh, otherwise, I can give you two minutes. And we can fill it uh, online. But I think it was very easy to fill in. Just link there and going with uh, that questionnaire. Because we still have, you know, five minutes uh, left is what is important for leadership in physical education. I suggest a few points. Of course, all of this, you don't need to take it for granted. If you don't feel it that are important for you, then just put it, you know, in the, in the, in the trash. But the most important thing for us as a physical education teachers, coaches, profession, is during your training sessions, during your game environment, please add more emotional intelligence in your exercise. See here, we can have 
thousands of exercises. Yes, thousands of exercises. But the most important thing is you need to add to those kind of exercises. Trust more. Trust your players. Trust your students. Listen more. Listen to your students. Listen to your players. That's the one of the best way to communicate. Talk more. Delegate more. Encourage them. Encourage in the difficult moments of the game of the, of, or the exercise. Support more. It means not supporting only with this kind of exercise. Support him as an individual, as an uh, uh, entity, as a human. Support him in the future development in all the disciplines. Involve more. Involve your students in the making decision process. It's easy to say, yeah, you give the ball to number six and the number six is going to number eight. Or if it's in volleyball, uh, okay, we do the combination three. As a coach, it's easy to say, but if you involve more the player to ask them, what do you think is the most efficient uh, combination that we need to do? It? That's also important. Develop more. We have in the physical education, in terms of performance analysis, analyzing system of the performance, we can say that player is 40% capacity, aerobic capacity. Yeah, and what's that? We need to develop more. We need to create programs, individual programs for them to develop more, praise more, and Last, but the most important thing from all of these 10 points is to smile. Smiling. Sports, the objective of sports is to make us healthy and happy. I cannot imagine being happy without expression of the smile. Smile is the definition of happiness. Share your happiness as a leader through your smile. And please take in consideration that you as a physical coach, physical education coach or physical education leader, you need to create more leaders not more followers. We don't need to create yes men, yes players, yes students. We need to create leaders that can have their own vision about sports, about life, about society, about uh, future, about history, about our environment, about our country, and about our world. Uh, I think I'm uh, in time. Thank you very much. I would like to, uh, to, yes, to stop here and uh, share with you, maybe if you have questions or any uh, topics that we want to, to discuss. But in the same time, I want to apologize. Maybe we've got some problem with uh, my Yeah. Yes, hello. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, this is just a wonderful session. But before we wind up, we have a few questions. Uh, is it okay? Questions, please. And uh, Narin Gangwa, can you put up the questions, please? Yeah, thank you so much, Isaac, for wonderful presentation. And uh, now here uh, we have some questions from the participants and uh, they are looking for the answer. Okay, so I'll take our first question. Uh, like Isaac sir, like um, parents, they are more focused on academics. And they are not, they are not uh, easily convenient to uh, support 
kids to part even participate in uh, sports also how we can convince that that is the one question asked from participant yeah i i think that's a it's a it's very valid question i'm a father as well and i want my children to be happy and successful to have a profession and in india the parents i know they are pressing more the kids or the uh, uh, teachers to do mathematics, physics, that is normal. And I really accept that. And I'm on the side of the parents. But how we can solve that? We need to create a professionalization of sports career. The parents, they need to know, I'll give you one example. In India, according to the social science, 80% of the superstars, of mega, mega stars, of social stars, 80% are coming from sports. And 20% Bollywood. Yes, but we need to create a, a social awareness of professionalization. Okay, you can be uh, a football player, you can be a volleyball player. But the problem that we face that there is not yet a professional society in sports. How much a volleyball player can earn? How much a football player? Football is okay, now it's going. The cricket is going. But for all the others, we need to create a, a, this, you know, consciousness. There is a profession. You can, you know, it's a beautiful profession. It's a, it's a fantastic profession. But the parents need to have the awareness and uh, the parents are very practical ones. They don't, think in the philosophy, it's just see and touch. And for that reason, I think in the years to come, we need to develop the sports in the society and create leagues that staff, players, physio, coaches, they can earn their life. They can have a very, you know, a stable and fin financial status doing those kind of activities. And the only one way is for us is to keep going, but in the same time to, to start to professionalize a lot of activities as discipline. As you're a, a sports minister is doing a lot for the sports, I was amazingly surprised how much they, ins they invest, they support in the development of football but, and, uh, and also in the other sports. But I'm sure in the next five, five to ten years, we'll professionalize the society. Because, let me give you an example. In your country, in terms of physical potential, talent, you have the liquid gold, liquid gold, but it's up to us, to you, to me, to the experts, to make this liquid gold transform in a beautiful jewelry. We have the natural talent of the kids. I've seen an amazing kid, six years old, jumping, doing a lot of natural skills that normally in my country, we need to train this boy maybe 200 hours to reach that level of skills. You have the natural skills, but we need to professionalize the system to make that you know, liquid gold transform in a beautiful jewelry. Because we have the talent, and I'm sure uh, we'll create more competitions. The parents, they will get more awareness. We need to give more scholarship to the students and a, a sports scholarship, same as in the United States. 
you know, you are a fast athlete of 100 yards, the fastest athlete is get scholarship to study. And all these, you know, uh, steps that I call professionalization of sports in India will create an uh, awareness on the parents. Nowadays, I know it's a struggle, but uh, I don't want to be, a, you know, longer to make it the story uh, shorter. You know, it's let's, you know, walk the talk. The fact that you with the Sports Authority of India organizing a lot of competition, exposure to the mass media, international exposure, will increase the social awareness. And the next step is to create professional and standard leagues. And also could be a step that we need to have a compulsory physical education in the schools. Same as in all, all the countries in Japan, uh, physical education is same as the mathematics. Yes, sorry for that. Yeah, Larry. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Ezra. Now I'll take next question. Uh, so, uh, sir, can you share your experience with Indian physical education and international physical education? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, also seminars in many states with the physical education coaches as well. And where the, what's the, the, the problem, I think, is testing, assessment of the athletes. The, we need to update the testing uh, that update the data and the, you know, the volume and the testing concept. Because in my view, in India, we have now the testing in the, the school, the data is in the last 30 years, we haven't worked on that. And an international level, according to International Olympic Committee, we have tests in the physical education from six years old to 18 years old. In India, we have also tests from six to 18 years old. But the criteria of testing, give you one example. If we test uh, uh, 50 meters, right? We give points if he has uh, 6.8 seconds, he will get 100 points in India. But at an international level, are uh, only 60 points. That we need to update the criteria of the testing because your talent, and I am absolutely responsible what I'm telling you now. I've been through a lot of countries. Your talent, the boys, the kids, the natural talent in India is, has higher potential than many countries. My mother country, Romania, or United States of Japan, or whatever. The talent is there, the liquid gold. But we need, you know, with this testing concept to be updated because Example in India, I think you have uh, eight criteria to test. We got also an international level, International Olympic Committee, eight uh, criteria. You, one is the uh, flexibility of uh, uh, quadriceps, yes, that you have it. You know, we have also an international one, but the methodology of doing the test is different. I, I got the chance to, to speak about, about it with uh, uh, Dr. Pradeep, with yourself, with maybe we'll do a, a group that we need to update all this criteria of testing. And then we can reach the international standard. Yep. That's the difference between, uh, you know, but otherwise, uh, 
I am absolutely convinced that you have more talent than a lot of countries. You don't, sorry for that. I know you know, you don't know what you have. The liquid gold is from the villages there, from the small schools there, and it's fantastic. I'm proud and so happy to, you know, to feel the talent that is there, the potential. We need to work hard to make this liquid gold again to the, uh, you know, beautiful jewelry. That's the difference. In some ways, the negative point is the testing that we need to update in terms of methodology, of trainings, modern methodology. And second aspect is the positive. You are on the higher standard compared with the international in terms of, you know, uh, talent. There are a group of, we call, you know, natural, you know, 18 natural movements that your kids are doing natural. We work in US, we work in Romania, we work in France, a lot of hours with the coordination skills, yes, with the movements, coordination, because we spend a lot of time in front of the computer and so on, but to have the talent, and then it's, it's a, I think you have the advantage. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Isaac. Now, uh, I'll take another question. I'll take next question. That is, uh, uh, sir, how you control or maintain aggressive uh, players in the match or practice? Yes, it's, it's uh, first of all, you know, controlling. The first step of controlling is preventing. You need to prevent, prevention. Prevention. How we call it you know, prevention is not only as a, a physical prevention of injury, is prevention of your emotional intelligence. And prevention of emotional intelligence is first, you need to know the psychological profile of your players. If you have one player that, you know, it's uh, his personality, his character is maybe is um, uh, not aggressive, but is more dynamic, let's say. That personality, you need to spend more time with him to make him aware that aggressiveness should not arrive and to prevent that aggressiveness arrives in the training or in the game. You need to prevent that. You need to spend more time to, to him before the, the game, before the competition, before the, because uh, before the uh, classes and share with him, show him your affection, show him your appreciation and what we have been calling empathy. Yes, that kind of empathy. You put yourself in his situation and you need to ask yourself what he needs and he needs affection he needs communication, and that's the, the most important thing as a, as a prevention of uh, aggressiveness is really emotional intelligence to the dialogue, to the communications, and uh, a lot of you know, emotional uh, the control. Need to talk, as we spoke today, you know, communication, communicate. In sport, we have yellow card, red cards, uh, many cards, or even green cards we have. You know? And it's, that is it's a prevention of, of there. But when one player is taking five yellow cards in a row, for me, the problem is not the player, it's the coach, it's me, it's my mistake, because I was not able to help him to control himself. Yep. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much uh, for answer. Now uh, I'll take uh, next and last question. Uh, that is, you were more focusing uh, during the presentation, your session, uh, that uh, leadership. So one of the question is uh, asked by the participant, which leadership style that you listed is the best style to adopt as a physical education teacher or community coach? 
sir, please. Yes, okay. Uh, I will share with you uh, the screen to go. I was uh, going very fast, yes, just, and we're going there. Just one second. Uh, it's okay now you can see that yeah we, we can see yeah we are, yes we are sharing the screen right yes okay let's you know have a look at this uh, this one which one is the is the best one I think for me right I, I was mentioning the uh, in the webinar that it's an individual aspect based on the cultural level of individual development of the leader, uh, social environment, yes? And I've been talking that the physical education has three zones. One is you as a leader in the school, university, with the athletes, and with the parents, federations, referees, and other uh, people. And if it's me, regarding the, this, you know, athletes and parents, referees, federations, association, I will base my leadership and emotional intelligence. Yeah. But if I am a teacher, I will base also my relationship in the school, in the university, and um, uh, any, you know, uh, educational organization and this chart. We have been talking that we are 10 or 11 leadership models and every each model is based on something. Example, if I will be a physical education coach, I will choose my leadership as a model based on training and instructions. That trait it's close to the transformational leadership style. We, uh, that one here that we spoke about it, that one, transformational leadership is typically inspired the staff by creating an environment of intellectual simulation, stimulation and simulations as well. And if I'm at the school, my relationship with the board, with the director, with the colleagues, with the other teacher will be more in a, in a, you know, in a transformational one because you need as a physical education, you need to give clear instructions, clear instruction. It is not blah, blah, it's not politics, it's clear. You, in a 20 meters, you got uh, 3.5 seconds or not. This is one I will do it, you know, will be a transformational one. And social support, social. And we see what is the, the, the social support that is coming in my relationship in the, with the, um, the group, with the universities, with my colleagues, with the board is, based on strategic one. Every each group has a strategy, right? Social, social support. You are there, I'll be there based on strategic, you know, leadership to support the development of the entire group. Even if I'm a physical coach and I need to be there as a strategic and transformational one. Yes, that's the, 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 Thing, the, the leadership that I really, the models that I will personally, I will choose in my relationship or in the, in the academic 
activities. But with the players, with the parents, with the athletes, with the referees, with the match commissioners, with the federations, with all the other people, with the mass media, I will be a leader based of emotional intelligence, or what exactly we have been talking, you know, starting with the motivation to the self-regularization, controlling of your emotion, identifying them. You know? But again, this is an individual one. It's how you have a look at them. What's, what style do you think it's positive for you? You need to try, but in the end are the effects, the results, because in the physical education is an activity and a profession, you know, results driven. And that we need to, to have. That is the, you know, as I mentioned to you is what exactly you are, are looking for. But personally, I will be transformational one and strategic in relation with the board. With, but in uh, athletic activities, students, players, coaches, another coaches, referees, based on emotional uh, intelligence. And I insist again, emotional intelligence. Why? Because nowadays, you know, with the internet, you can just go in a, everywhere in a link, say, uh, I need exercises for uh, speed. I need exercises for endurance. Or I need exercises in, uh, for uh, football for possessions. And you can have thousands of exercises. But in those exercises, you need to put, you know, to control, to have a dynamic, emotional dynamic of the exercises. You need to adapt them to the level of your athletes. You need to make them happy. You need to, you need to make them, uh, uh, you know, very effective. You know, in, in, in sport, in football, and that's my last example. We got uh, one coach, his name is Mourinho. Yes, in football. He called himself the special one or the number one. I don't know. But I have all his exercises, all his exercises. Do you think if I do the same exercises as Mourinho with Bengaluru or uh, Odisha, with, uh, with Delhi or whatever, I will be successful? No. Yes? Because you need to have this emotional you know, intelligence in approaching of the, the sports. Otherwise, everyone can be a Mourinho. Everyone can be, you know, uh, a super, a super coach. But the successful coach is only one who is the winner. And winning as a team and winning as an individual level. Individual level is to make every each student of your class reaching a high performance. That will be, you know, the style of uh, uh, leadership, yeah? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Isaac. Now, uh, as, as we have with us uh, uh, Dr. Pradeep Datta, sir, a very uh, famous name in uh, football, Indian football. Uh, he's a FIFA instructor and he's working very closely to Isaac. So I would like to uh, uh, invite uh, Datta, sir, uh, please uh, share your views and ideas. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Narendra. So first of all, I thank my dear friend, Mr. Isaac, to accept the invitation to be here with us. It was an excellent session. And I re I'm really happy and I'm really happy uh, to see so nicely he has explained these leadership styles, which is very conducive for the physical education teaching. You know. And uh, I'm really amazed. I'm really feeling very proud that almost all the physical edu education is gathered the same platform and that to form different part of the globe. It's really exciting one and I welcome uh, almost all the physical educationists do participate in these activities. We have a lot of eminent speakers, speakers online, right? Make sure that you try to, uh, what do you call, grasp almost all the expertise from almost all the panelists from different part of the world. Thank you very much. I uh, welcome everyone again and love to see you all every day in this session.
Thank you very much. Thanks to Mr. Isaac. Thanks to everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Data uh, uh, sir. Now, uh, I would like to uh, request our uh, principal and the regional director, uh, Dr. G. Kishor, sir, uh, please uh, share your uh, thoughts and uh, as you are very keen, sir, and uh, you, are, you, are you, are, you are participating in all the sessions, sir, please uh, share your ideas, sir, please. Uh, Dr. Narendra, we have some more panelists international with us. Why don't you ask them and I will conclude. I will conclude with after hearing them. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, now I would like to request uh, Usa ma'am uh, to please uh, introduce uh, or invite our other speakers. Please, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, just unmute. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Isaac, it was a wonderful session. It was nice having with you with us. Indeed, the uh, ministry and uh, Hello India is proud to have you in this panel. So you have made this event a very colorful one. And in the meantime, may I uh, call upon Karen? Karen, are you there? Kluka, are you there? So I think, uh, Karen, yeah. Karen, could you, could you sp uh, uh, speak a few words? Because I think in between you heard the session. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. So you know, I enjoyed that presentation. Uh, it's a very important component to think about leadership uh, as it um, uh, involves all sport participants and especially the physical education teachers and coaches uh, in this particular program. And I look forward tomorrow to sharing some of my ideas um, as to how sport is organized and uh, delivered in in my country of Canada. Um, yep, thank you so much. Yeah, so our principal, Dr. G. Kishore, I'm sure you have met him. Uh, so uh, Karen is the president of WASM, World Association of Sport Management. And Kishore sir had been regularly attending sessions. Our principal, Dr. J. Kishore. Yeah. Met Madam. We have met Madam. We have met last at uh, uh, the Wasam conference at uh, Lithuania. And uh, before that at Malaysia also we met. I think oh, Madam. yes. I remember. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, nice, to, to nice, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> thank you for the invitation. Thank I'm very you. honored. <laughs> we are indeed honored too. And I'm sure the participants should know about it. And we have a session by ma'am tomorrow. So looking forward to you, ma'am, for the session tomorrow. Thank you so much for your nice words. Uh, do we have Kluka here? Just fine. Uh, yes, I'm here. Hi, Kluka. Uh, nice to see you. Could you just share your views, please? Uh, first of all, Isaac, um, uh, a very interesting uh, presentation. Um, it's, it was interesting to see how you wove uh, emotional intelligence into a component that is needed for uh, teaching or coaching. Uh, many times we think that people who are um, seemingly very smart, who know all sorts of things, they can't communicate to people about all that they know in a way that they can understand. And that's the secret, I think, one of the secrets anyway, about teaching and about coaching. Because unless we can communicate what it is that we know and what we've experienced to others so that they can know and experience, it's, uh, it's, too late, 20 years later, when they go, aha, is that what they meant? So uh, that part is so terribly important. Uh, that's why, for myself as an example, um, when I first came out of undergraduate school, my challenge was I could relate really well to high school students, but to primary school children, oh dear. So I knew immediately either I would have to work really hard on that piece or I should go and be more with high school people 
So I took the high school. But since that time, uh, I've learned that um, no matter how much you know and how bright you are, it means nothing to the future of the world. Nothing. So um, I'm very happy to hear you have put that together in a way that can be helpful uh, to primary, but also all the way through high performance. So thank you. Thank you, Luca. Thank, thank you so much. You. Thank you. And you are absolutely right, because not only in a sport, but in life, if I will be a very rich person, and if I want to open a company, in if I need to choose between someone with the highest level of IQ and low level of emotional intelligence in that person and another person that has a normal IQ and a high level of emotional intelligence, I will choose the second one after 30 years of experience. <laughs> yeah. That was great. Thank you. Yeah. Did you so? Sir, you, you, Rosa, I was trying to link in. She's been trying a level, but she's unable to no, enter she's it. There. She's, there. she's coming. She's, she's here. She's on board, my friend. Yes. It's so Rosa? nice to see you. Yes, hello. Hi, so Rosa. nice to see you all. And uh, um, thank you so much for such an inspiring conference, Dr. Isaac. I really, really enjoy it. Now, uh, I just would like to ask a question because it has been framed there by three different persons. So I would like you that you are in there, you are in India, uh, to let us know about women's participation. I mean, and, and three of the questions indicate how we make girls to participate much more in sport, and particularly how to make parents allow girls to participate in sport. So please, what can you tell us from your experience being there? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, question. I think, you know, that uh, before asking to that question, let me remind you the social position of women in India and the social position of women in Asia in general. You know, we have too many schools of thoughts, the Western culture, and Asian culture as well. And the social and cultural position and situation of women in, in India is absolutely different compared with our Western society. And my perception is that we don't have a segregation with that. In, in India, we don't say the women, you're, you don't need to do sports. No. But the women themselves, they're a little bit not uh, shy. Socially, you know, that social skills, it's the society how it's organized in India, you know, is by group. We, I don't want to say tribalism, but it's by group. And the, the women are very shy in the group, not yet to take the leadership doing something. But there are, believe me, women with a leadership that are really inspire me. And I've got in my organization very strong leadership and I really like to work with. It's efficient one. But the participation of women or girls in sport is, according to my data, is compared with 1972, when we got this, you know, the International Olympic Committee introduced the testing in India and data. The participation was 80, is now is 82% more in the sports and in the society. We are there. We have, in, especially in, in a football, we got the World Cup organizing now in India, the, the girls, and it's, uh, we are on a positive trend, but we need to professionalize the sports for women because the parents say, yeah, you, why you need to be a volleyball player? Because under 17 years old, you need to get married. 
right? But when the parents, they will understand that doing sport is a profession, which can be a professor, play, and so and so, they will think twice about it. But nowadays, I'm really positively surprised with the progression and the, the attitude, the social commitment of the ministry regarding the women's sports development. I've been in Japan 30 years ago when the women didn't want to, to practice a lot. No, stay at home, kneel, bow, the, you know, in front of the, the husband, cleaning and so on. But with the education, with activities, with the professionalization of sports, with the, the social mass media impact nowadays, I think the role of women in sports and in the society and the leadership, leadership is really inspiring. Oh, thank you. Yes, Rosés. And the way, the way that now we have three or four women with us is also a sign, <laughs> right? Of course, we are, we are improving. We are yeah, gender work. equity. Yes. I think Dr. Kishore and Dr. Usha, Usha are pushing for that. And I know Karen tomorrow will also speak on that, about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Thank you so much, Rosa. Thank you. It's been nice. Very good sum up. Uh, Kishore, sir. Thank you, yes. sir. So please, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, all the pan distinguished panelists, experts. And uh, as I have pointed out at the very outset about the relevance and uh, significance of the topic, I would like to once again uh, place on record very efficient way that the uh, topic has been presented. And the new leadership style specific to modern methodology of physical education, which is more relevant because we are on a transformation stage. In India too, we are transforming from one methodology to the latest methodology. So it is more relevant in India and for the new methodology, new leadership is. So he has very with, uh, explicitly made it clear that for a country like India, we need to create uh, more leaders than followers. So this is a typical Indian phenomenon that you know, you've got a psycho fancy and become more followers and uh, leaders are quite a few. So this may be one of the striking after his interaction, his experience in India, he realized that a rather general it's a principle too, that this is more applicable to us, that we need to create more uh, leaders than the followers. And also he has uh, categorically made it clear that uh, what, who, who is a boss and who is a leader, what distinguishes the boss, what distinguishes the leader, and what is uh, the sort of leadership required for that. Uh, that is about the uh, transformational uh, leadership and the strategic uh, requirements thereof. So that is what, and about he touched upon all the important skills which are required, the motivation, uh, about the, more importantly, about self-regulation and uh, about the self-awareness, empathy, emotional intelligence. All key areas have been very important areas have been uh, uh, in, a, in simple words, in understanding language, he has made it uh, clear to the entire participant. More than that, he also touched upon the relevance of uh, physical prioritizing physical education in India. He told that we have more talents in the country. There are Indians have won more of talents there, but it is uh, physical education need to be strengthened. He has told very categorically that the, every school physical education should be compulsory. This is what he has told. He has told that physical education needs to be made compulsory and the role of the parents and the teacher has been explicitly made clear. So that's what, you know, uh, this uh, very enlightening lecture. And I'm sure that uh, this will give a lot of uh, 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 moral courage and also give the arm our physical education fraternity they will be empowered with these skills which, with, with which they will be able to deliver better. And I once again appreciate and thank you, Mr. Isaac Darwin for the presentation and all the distinguished panelists where they have supplemented uh, and uh, discussed on four areas 
uh, uh, with regard to his topic. Thank you, and thank you, Sri Thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow, same time. Thank you, thank you, thank you all the participants and see you all tomorrow.